Hey guys, BuilderDude35 here. Today I'm going to be giving you some tips for building a good FLL robot. All that and more after this. Now the first thing I have to say before I go on to the tips is that I don't want to force anything onto you. These are just things that I've learned through my experience that I think might help you. But if you have anything better that you would rather try instead, then go right ahead and, and try that. So with that being said, let's move on to the, the eight tips. So the first tip I have for you is to build your robot in squares and rectangles. This is because any other shape is really a waste of space, and this is also the strongest way to make your robot. Now you'll see in this video here that my robot is built in perfect squares and does not wobble at all. The second tip is to place your motors inverted or upside down. Now you'll see in this picture how much space it saves. If you have them right side up, your robot becomes way too tall and top heavy. But if they're upside down, like I'm showing in this picture, you can get a very compact robot. The one disadvantage is this means that negative power is going to make your robot go forward. But that's an easy t thing to compensate for in the program. The third tip is to place your EV3 brick backward on your robot. This isn't that important, but the reason for this is to make it easier to access the EV3 buttons when your robot's in base without turning it around. The fourth tip is to very neatly coil the wires on your robot. Now you'll see in this picture that I've done exactly that. I've coiled all the wires where they're out of the way of any moving parts on the robot. And this is important because you don't want your robot to drive around like a spaghetti monster and then your wires get caught on something on the field or on a moving part in your robot and then you have to rescue it. The fifth tip is to place color sensors on the front of your robot. Now you only need to do this if you're using these color sensors for aligning with the mat, which is something I do highly suggest. If you want to learn how to do this, I'm going to put an annotation up right now that is going to send you to a video that teaches you how to make an alignment program for your robot that will perfectly align your robot to the lines on the mat. Tip number six is to use the tallest wheels you can possibly find. This is going to give your robot more grip and it's going to make your robot go faster, which is in the end going to make it more agile and save you a lot of time. Tip seven is to use an appropriate rear wheel on your robot. Ideally, what you want to use is the ball caster that's shown in this picture. It, it's this part that's shown and there's a little metal ball that clips into it. But unfortunately, I don't have one of those. So this is pictures of what I have built. I don't really have an exact method of building these. Just keep in mind that the FLL table is made of plywood and these pieces of plywood are not always flush with each other. So when you're building your rear wheel, make sure it's like the one on the right where it won't get caught on the gaps in the table, where the one on the left you'll see will get caught. Tip eight which I feel is the most important tip, but is the most difficult, is to use dog gears and make your attachments modular so you can take your motorized attachments on and off in just seconds. Now what I see a lot of teams do, and I mean a lot of teams, is they put their attachment on their motor and they move their motor around the robot and they, and they take the attachments on and off, directly on and off the motor. And this wastes so much time, guys. This is like... It takes minutes of just changing attachments. With my dog gear system, what you can do is your mo motor stays in one place the whole time, and then you have the dog gears that clutch and unclutch uh, from the motor. And I'm, now next week, or this coming weekend, I'm going to be posting a tutorial that is going to tell you step by step exactly how to build these dog gears. Now uh, the other thing is, if your team is using an NXT, you don't have an EV3, don't fret. It's all about how you build the robot, not whether or not you have the most up-to-date technology. In Nature's Fury, my team used an NXT, and we scored 368 points on the table. So it's all about how you build the robot, not whether or not you have the most up-to-date technology. Now, if you're still watching, I would like to say a very sincere thanks for watching it all the way through. 
The other thing is, if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this. This weekend, I'm going to be posting a video all about the ins and outs of using dog gears to make modular attachments. That'll make it very easy to add or remove uh, motorized attachments, and it'll save you minutes on the field. So, all that next week. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you around.